Hi there, welcome to another chapter of the Electric BMW 320i project. Well, it's spring and uh, <laughs> maybe the car will be on the road uh, in this warm weather. Getting very close, uh, you'll see that towards the end of this video. But uh, mostly what I'm showing this video is how I finished up the uh, installation of everything. The uh, DMOC going into the uh, engine bay, connecting up the JEVQ and all the wiring, getting the uh, battery charger, the Brusa going, and then uh, one little part that uh, almost uh, set me back uh, more than a month if it had to be taken out. I uh, accidentally bent a pin inside the uh, encoder cable on the Siemens and uh, I would have had to take the Siemens out to fix that. It would have really been bad, but fortunately I was able to repair the connector on the Siemens in the car and got the cable connected up and everything worked. And that's what I'll be showing. The uh, wheels actually spin. <laughs> That's great. So now the next thing is to get the car off the jack stands and uh, rolling on the street. But for now, let's uh, check out what I did this time. Trimming up the last few batteries for bottom balancing before charging the whole pack. I have my uh, little Keithleys here that I have a program that automatically trims them right up to the uh, bottom balance voltage. These are a couple new batteries I had to put in the pack that uh, just connects into the right onto the cables, no problem. And once those couple batteries are all brought up to the bottom balance level, I can charge the whole pack. Here's a look at my brand new Siemens EVSE. Unfortunately, this one doesn't work. I just got it. I spent all this time and energy uh, bringing a cable wire over here at this conduit and uh, plug it in. It boots up, but then it goes into this failure mode and there's like Nothing that can be done to fix it. Uh, I was on the phone with Siemens for about a half an hour trying a bunch of different resets and nothing. So uh, they're supposed to be sending me back, sending me a new one. So unfortunately, I'll have to do something else to try and charge the car up. Won't be able to use this. Charging up the ball full battery pack, and that's the Brusa in there. Brusa charger. 3.3 kilowatt. Have a fuse back here and another disconnect switch. The interesting thing was when I finally got the uh, J1772 in there, the only way it will fit is upside down. The other way, there's no clearance for the handle or to get the latch on. And the other thing I had to do was uh, directly connect to uh, the uh, socket that was supposed to be for the EVSE that's not here anymore because it's going back to Siemens. Unfortunately, a brand new EVSE came here and was in fault all the time whenever it was plugged in, so they're replacing it. And uh, what I did was I stole the uh, cable off my other EVSE to uh, make up this one. And uh, now that works. All the high voltage wiring is now done. Fuse block and Bus bar, just have to, uh, last thing, connect up the uh, DMOC, the, um, that's the BMS right there, it's all working really well, and also last bit of wiring here, all those wires are for the JEVQ, and that's going to go in at the same time the uh, DMOC does. Uh, one last thing is i got to do something with these wires, these are all the uh, connections for the battery box heaters, which uh, this summer I probably won't need, but next winter uh, or fall probably need to start looking at connecting those up. Well, last big thing to go in, the DMOC. I'll get that cranked up in there and see how well it gets connected to everything. It might be really tough. It's getting really tight in that engine compartment, but here we go.
All right, DMOC is now in the engine bay and mounted up. All that cabling is done. I'm going to get the uh, encoder cable, that's it. And then, of course, the connection there to uh, that goes to the Jeff Q. There's some interesting getting the bolts in down there. It's very tight, just enough room actually to get a wrench in there and tighten those, but I thought that would be easier going that way and trying to put the battery box in after that. Uh, everything's done on the wiring, all the high voltage. See all the cables. So the next thing is just to get the Jeff Q there. There's Jeff Q here and this is the BMS. This is where I plan to have it mounted up. And then it just has to be wired into this box and be ready to go. Well, successfully mounted the Jeff Q on top of the DMOC. Wasn't too bad. Just uh, drilled and tapped some holes. I think with a little bit of Loctite and some RTV, those will seal up really well. Now the fun comes with uh, sorting out all these wires. It's like uh, 15 or 16 coming out of the Jeff Q that I have to terminate. And they come into um, that connector and that connector down there. And then it should be ready to turn on and run. The uh, only thing I just discovered was the amp seal that goes to the DMOC has the CAN bus in it and I need the CAN bus to come out. In fact, it's here's the other end of it. It goes into the car to run other things like the instrument cluster. So I'll have to somehow figure out how to connect that. Also got the uh, throttle body figured out. I was going to mount that up. I'm going to get another uh, bracket made, but uh, that worked really well and it's really nice and stiff, so uh, it should work good. Still have to make up some kind of uh, bracket to uh, terminate the uh, throttle cable that has to have something to push against so that the cable can pull in and out, but that shouldn't be any issue. So. Getting closer. Well, all the wiring is done finally in the engine compartment. Got the uh, throttle body all mounted up nice. Actually, I got some new uh, black anodized pieces to go on there when they get back from the machine shop. Jeff Q's mounted up on top of the DMOC. Looks good there. Uh, all the other connections battery wise and done. Fix the uh, standoff issue down there with the cable and the uh, battery pack turns on. Front battery packs all done. Still have to do something with these uh, box heater wires but that's about it and everything else is ready to go. Replacement Siemens EVSE. Let's see what happens when we'll plug this one in. Hopefully, it will just come up green and be ready to charge the car. Yay! That's what it's supposed to do. Does all the lights on first and then just this green guy here. That's perfect. That means it's ready to charge. You can set up. Actually, I have to take it apart. It has the ability to, uh, uh, this is 7.6 charger, kilowatt charger, but you can turn it down to 3.3 or even a quarter or half of that. So it's very versatile. Well, that's great. They actually got something that works. <laughs> Passenger compartment, on the other hand, still needs a lot of work. Still have a lot of wires out. You see, just testing out the uh, instrument cluster. 
and how it works. And uh, it is, uh, it turns on, got the JLD and the instrument cluster actually reads up CAN data out of the DMOC. You see it's sitting there, that's a temperature and over here is the uh, charge which is, corresponds to that only six amp hours. Unfortunately, when the um, throttle is pressed, here's something going on, but there's no RPM indicated on the instrument cluster. And try that again. See that? And checking on the uh, inside the DMOC, it seems like there is a uh, no RPM signal coming through, which is an indication that possibly the encoder in the DMOC is not working. So next thing to check out and figure out what I'm going to do about that. This doesn't look good. Well, after I tried to spin up the wheels and the motor was just making noise and not turning and wasn't getting any indication of RPM, I decided I have to find out what the problem is and it does seem like it's a encoder problem that the data is not getting encoded right from the motor so first thing to check out is the DMOC and that's why it's all apart. Uh, that connector there where the probe is at was just trying to find out if there's any signals coming in. Uh, you can see those are the capacitors for uh, charging up and converting the DC into AC. So basically found out the cable's fine and that connector's fine. What's wrong is with the little um, connector that's on the motor right here. There's a, a bent pin inside that shell and uh, that apparently is shorting out one of the encoder lines. So the motor doesn't act like it's turning or at least the DMOC doesn't think it's turning. Hopefully I will uh, fix that little issue and get this all put back together and be spinning the wheels. Here's a look at the uh, connector pins and hard to tell from this view but uh, it's basically this pin that's up here on the right there that one is bent and pushed in so it's probably doesn't Maybe if it's bent back, it might make contact, but it's not going to be real good. Might have to replace this connector. Well, there appears to be enough slack on the cables inside to uh, possibly move one of these wires over to another position, but probably not while it's in the car. It's just. Uh, no room to work in here and uh, that's going to be still tight to do while it's attached. That means everything's got to come out. Well I think I got really lucky. The uh, yellow wire here was the pin that was damaged and was pushed in and I just took a pair of tweezers and pushed it back out and it actually came all the way out and uh, Let's see, we get down to, you can see the connector body again. It's now straightened. So, maybe it'll go together without any problem. I don't know how much, uh, focus. I don't know much how much pressure is on that pin when the cable goes on, but I guess I can try putting it together and see if it works. I don't think it really will move around when the car's running. It's all kind of held together. So I might just got really lucky. Dashboard's getting a little more put together. Just need to put the instrument cluster back in. But the big event.
turn it on. Still have uh, seven amp hours of battery. And then, here we go. Seaman motor spinning right up. Awesome. And with the regen, it slows it down. And now for the final checkout. Transmission engaged. And step on the gas. Spinning wheels. Well, that's a major accomplishment. Still pretty loud because uh, brand new brakes, but those will wear in real quick. And the uh, next thing is to get it off the jack stands. So, there we go. Well, <laughs> I guess it's sometimes uh, better to be lucky than good. I really got lucky with that uh, connector pin on the Siemens. Man, if that had uh, been broken or couldn't be repaired on the car, I would have had to pull everything out. And all the wires had to be disconnected, and oh, that would have just really <laughs> been bad. It sent me back uh, months. Who knows? But. Uh, it didn't and it went together and so as you can see with the spinning wheels everything is working so the last thing to do now is to um, get that interior finished get all the wiring done in there uh, got one last thing of uh, got to put the carpeting in before the seats but uh, that should go in that should be just an afternoon job of course everything like that <laughs> takes longer than I think but uh, hopefully this will get it on the road and start driving it, and uh, in the next video I'll be able to show that. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you later.